Howdy, and welcome back to Runestone Reborn. My name is Rune, and continuing the Transformers Armada Marathon, we'll be taking a look at Deluxe or Supercon Blur with his Minicon Incinerator. This set came out in 2002 as part of Wave 3 of the Supercon Assault. Hey, that's my shtick. Oh hey Kit, fancy doing a collab on this toy? Yeah, sure. It'd be nice to do a collab that doesn't get put on hold for over 12 months. I'm staying out of that one. So, where to start? Well, normally with bots that come with small partner figures, I start with the partner himself. Blur's Minicon Incinerator transforms into a sleek Cerulean Formula Racer, though I'd consider that Keat Orange spoiler's aerodynamic capabilities to be highly dubious considering it's right in front of a massive wall formed from Incinerator's feet. While some Minicons are ingeniously designed in spite of their miniature status, there's still only so much you can do with them. At least one mode tends to suffer more, though to me Incinerator evens things out with the blatant feat in alt mode, and in bot mode… well, you'll see. Beyond that, it's a reasonably solid vehicle, predominantly bright blue with an orange-yellow spoiler, a touch of grey that'll be more prominent down the line, and the dark blue wheels and painted cockpit window. Why Minicons even need such windows is anyone's guess. Considering the low parts count allotted for most Minicons, Incinerator's transformation is extremely basic, having a similar scheme to most MicroMasters. Things get a little freaky with the entire front section, which ends up as a tumorous growth on Incinerator's right arm. Good thing his right elbow has a ball joint to get it out of the way. A shame too, since Incinerator's bot mode is otherwise not too bad. The slender arms and thighs, combined with his somewhat buff torso and lower legs, result in an agile yet powerful physique, as if the little speedster packs a big punch. Which I guess would literally be the case anyways, what with the huge dagger-shaped kibble on his arm. It also serves as a shield if you're feeling creative. The sculpting's not too shabby either, most notably the emblem on the left side of his chest and the head with a nicely painted visor. The head itself doesn't really stand out, since some of his brethren sport similar traits, but it's competent for what it is. Now on to the part everyone loves, the articulation! Incinerator has nothing at the head, it's attached to this Keat Orange spoiler at the back, but his arms do rotate forward and backwards, though they do bump into said spoiler, unfortunately and the joint is so tight that both arms tend to go up at the same time. This is because they're joined together with a single pin in there. He has nothing at the elbow on his left arm, but at the right arm he has a ball-jointed elbow that has the entire front section of the car for some reason. The legs move forward and backwards on somewhat loose joints. This one's pretty floppy, his left leg, but the other leg stays just fine. And finally, at the knee, they bend more than 90 degrees, which is a very nice knee bend, especially for a Minicon. So Incinerator isn't very poseable, but seriously, he's a Minicon, what did you really expect? As for the main article, Armada was a time when G1 homages were not only less frequent, but arguably more subtle. Other than being an Autobot, the only commonalities Blur has with his namesake is that he turns into a super sleek car, and Blue is part of the deco. He's more or less his own bot in this line. That said, this design looks really dang cool, wouldn't you say? Now, I can safely say the grey used as the main colour wouldn't have been my first choice. This shade comes uncomfortably close to what's been described on many other figures as Games Workshop Grey, resulting in a deco which leaves much to be desired. Sure, like you said, there's some near all spark blue and navy here and there, as well as the orange missiles, but on the whole, the color scheme makes me sleepy just looking at it. Luckily, the sculpt itself is awesome. It reminds me of some kind of 90s Ferrari. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be lying if I said the vehicle deco was one of my favourites too. It's not bad, but compared to his colourful comrades in arms, Blur is… well, drab. The only interesting details we get are the potential burn or scorch marks at the rear of the car, an indication of how fast and furious he is. You'd think if any character would be silver instead of a flat grey, it'd be the bot whose Japanese name is Silver Bolt. 
Granted, neither color is show accurate, as he was closer to white, but with a shiny metallic coat he'd be more appealing at least. Regardless, Shattered Glass Blur sports my favorite paint job the mold has gotten, but that's another video. So, what are the Minicon gimmick kit? 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 KIT! What's the reverse convoy? What just happened? We're discussing the Minicon gimmick? Oh! Okay, well, basically, this sort of thing wouldn't be allowed on daytime television on any channel except Animal Planet. However, considering that Transformers are all aliens, that's good enough for me. You see, the Minicon takes the role of the male anglerfish, inserting and embedding itself into the much larger female, never to be independent again. While the male anglerfish of the planet known as Tosev 3 is reduced to a glorified testicle continually fertilizing the female's eggs, the Cybertronian incinerator acts as a power-up for blur. The two rudimentary winglets at the front of the alt mode, which suggests that incinerator species was once capable of flight, but lost that ability over time, act as a trigger to deploy Blur's main defense mechanism. A flight mode. The flight mode of Blurricus armadii is, at first glance, similar to that of the rival species Corveticus flamboyanticus, known colloquially as the tracks, with the main difference being that the wild North American Blur's flight mode is solely accessed through the symbiotic relationship with his Minicon. Once Blur has escaped his many natural predators, he may be able to retract his wings to resume his pastoral grazing. Though considering the nature of a spring-loaded beast of burden, it wouldn't take much to startle the Blur and his Minicon. A simple tap on the back is enough to redeploy the wings and fly to safety once more. On top of Blur's car mode are two inert Minicon ports. Female Blurs use these ports to attract the weakest males so they may not pollute the gene pool. T totally. I think the gimmick is cool, too. Yeah. Personally, I think this is better than Hotshot's flight mode. The car already looked aerodynamic, and the wings are proportionate enough that I think it works. BRB getting bleach. The transformation begins with Blur's and Incinerator's mating ritual. From there, most of the conversion process is dedicated to cracking the many great panels of this vehicle shell and revealing the scant robot bits within. Much of the rear alt mode gimmickry is dedicated to a massive inert chunk of car which just hangs off his back and does nothing of interest in robot mode. Many of the joints on my copy are stiff, including one of the leg sliders and both outward shoulder transformation joints. The latter feel like they're going to shear off every single time I move them. Overall, this transformation is the antithesis of fun and just makes me nervous to perform. I suppose it's apt to describe Blur's transformation as a metamorphosis since his robot mode reminds me very much of a butterfly or a moth. However, Blur's metamorphosis is more Kafka-esque. Instead of turning into something beautiful and majestic, Blur's robot mode is something I'd rather not let into my room. Sure, from the front he looks fine, but then so does pretty much every robot mode. He has really chunky lower legs that flare out in that ever so specific futuristic fashion that I really love, and his shoulder pads are so enormously large and unwieldy that they could only work on a giant robot. Blur's head sculpt doesn't look half bad either, looking a lot like a generic racing helmet, which works for the overall design. I'm sure Stig was a working name for this bot. However, similarly to the Roman god Janus, you'll find something ugly staring right back at you when you turn him around. This isn't a backpack. Not anymore. This is nearly half the mass of the alternate mode stapled onto Blur's kidneys. It's not so much that he's carrying the car, it's more like he's growing out of it. And none of it is useful in robot mode, none at all. Much like the family of Gregor Samsa, this disgusting abomination makes me want to keep Blur out of sight forever. Eh, it could pass for a cape given how it too flares out at the bottom. Even then, it's not my favorite design choice on a Transformers toy. It's hefty, it juts out quite a bit, and doesn't even lock into place. The core robot design, however, I quite like it. The generic racing helmet, as you call it, lacks a mouth, and his optics are only just discernible through his visor. 
He's pretty expressionless, which in my eyes fits the cool, calm collective character that is Armada Blur. Also in this mode, the figure explodes with color, at least two shades of blue, red, though once again they blotted out the Autobot symbol, ugh, along with some additional orange yellow. It's not G2 garish by any means, but it's eye catching for sure. Backpack notwithstanding, I'd say Blur actually looks pretty good, except for his hands. Well, they're not hands, they're flippers, or at the very least overly simplified. Good thing his twin blasters peg into the forearms, there's no way in hell he could wield anything with those. Alright, I think I ran out of funny describing the minicon gimmick in vehicle mode, so I'll be more straightforward this time. Blur comes with two spring-loaded missile launchers. However, unlike most launchers you may be accustomed to, these are not fired by a simple switch. Instead, the firing mechanism uses another Minicon port. A small peg on the inside is pressed down when Incinerator or any other Minicon is inserted. Doing this allows the port to move. Pushing the Minicon forward fires the missile. I have to say, it's a very inefficient way of shooting at your enemy. Could you imagine having to copulate with your handgun every time you wanted to shoot it? Now, on to the part everyone loves. Again. The articulate- Get it. What? <sighs> While the figure does have articulation, it may as well not exist for all the good it does. The head can turn either side, the elbows are on a double hinge, both the upper arms and hips swing in and out, and there are these mid-thigh ball and socket joints, the closest we get to knees on this toy. However, with no shoulder articulation, no forward and back hip movement, and no actual knees or ankles, posability is on the level of your average G1 toy. And even if Blur had said joints to begin with, the backpack's so heavy and ginormous, he'd more than likely topple over. I guess being a brick's a blessing in this case. I remember back when I was a kid with my Cybertron product catalogs all sprawled out in front of me on the floor, and I remember always thinking that Cybertron Blur was just the coolest thing I ever did see. Now that I have the mold in hand, I can safely say I probably would have been disappointed that I'd gotten him back then. It also doesn't help that Armada Blur looks even worse. Drab colors in car mode, stunted articulation, and a lazy transformation all coalesce to form a rather poor experience overall. For that, I rate Blur as tragic. Fortunately, Incinerator doesn't fare nearly as bad. True, he features a rather lazy transformation, though I've seen lazier, and has some kibble issues, he's still really entertaining to convert back and forth and roll on my desk. Incinerator on his own is just more fun, and for that, he gets promoted to crummy status. What say you? Well, I'm a tad more positive, though Blur certainly not the cream of the Armada crop. While it's an awesome looking design all around, and yes that includes the Minicon activated flight mode, as the saying goes, looks aren't everything, and said gimmick paves the way for a robot with subpar articulation and one of the most intrusive backpacks I've seen since the Luke Snowspeeder mech from the Star Wars crossovers range, even if, again, it's visually better with it resembling a cape, cloak, whatever. As for Incinerator, I've nothing to add. Outside of that infamous kibble issue, he's alright. Of the minicons I own, I prefer the likes of Skator and Teradive among others. Under my old rating system, I'd give the set a mild recommendation, which now translates to a bronze. Demolisher, Hoist, Supercon Prime, and even Galvatron are my first picks for this line. Though I will say, Blur's more interesting than the next Armada figure I'm going to cover. Stay tuned for that. Until then, Till all are one. This has been Kick Catastrophe. Transform and roll out. A big thanks to Kick Catastrophe for this video. Check out his channels on both Flare and YouTube. Who knows? You might see another collab in the near future.